in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. You know, I just so want you to know how precious you are to Him and that He has a purpose for you in this hour and that He is calling you to come into the secret place of His presence that He might write with His finger on your heart His Word, His purpose, and that He might impart Himself to you so that you be changed, transformed, and that as He is, so too you are on this earth, bringing Him glory. I want to live a life where my worship causes the fire of heaven to fall because He said that it's acceptable to me. I pray that this message would so be the bread presence reaching you right where you are and lifting you today. May this be a word of encouragement, now word. And so let's pray and let's press in because I've got a message on the fingerprint of God and how God wants to write using his finger on your heart and make you a living epistle. Make you something so that you're not fabricating, manufacturing, but you're real. In this hour, we need real Christians. The world needs to see something that's true. They need to see a life transformed. And that happens in the secret place. If you're struggling with something in the secret place, as you allow him to so write into your heart, engrave his law in his word, it begins to get into every fiber of your being. It will stir such a hunger, such a desperation that you come in the secret place. God, I just want to dissolve in you. I want to be found in you. I want to be like you. How oh, may he open your eyes to see, ears to hear, to see and taste of his glory today. To stir up in you a fresh hunger. Oh, more God. Father, we come in the name above all names, the name of Jesus and by way of the cross and what you did. Holy Spirit, come bear witness and show us and teach us what Jesus did and who we now are. Stir in us fresh hunger, more God. We want more of you. Father, we're desperate. We're hungry. We're thirsty. Father, I thank you that you would do such a mighty work in us this day as we surrender and put ourselves on the altar. Father, may the fire fall and may you be glorified. Jesus, lift it up. I thank you that you so called us in this hour. And we want to be living epistles read by all, bringing you, Jesus, all the honor, all the power, all the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And the church said, Amen. I can't think of anything greater than God. I just want in this hour to be real, to be a person, a living epistle so that I'm a constant walking, preaching, like a neon light, shining brightly, not drawing men onto myself, but lifting up Jesus to be a life on that altar where the fire truly falls, that you see real worship. Go with, real, go with me real quickly to Exodus 31. And in Exodus 31, verse 18, it says, and when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Can you imagine to have touched those stones where his finger wrote, engraved those precious words? that still stand today and will stand for eternity. What he writes stands. It's not engraved with the chisel. It's not manufactured. But it was the master who created all things, taking something he made and touching it with his hand and inscribing. You know, I, I sat there last year. We had the midterm elections here in the U.S. And I went to vote. I brought in my voter card, brought in my driver's license. My wife and kids went in front of me. They went, no issues. 
I come and get my stuff, and they pull up this signature. I don't know where they got it from. Chicken scratch. And I said, I don't recognize that. I don't know where you got it. I said, here's my driver's license. And they said, the signature on your driver's license doesn't match this. Can't let you vote. I said, I don't know where you got that from. This is my signature. Here's my voter card. They brought several people over. And they began to zoom in and look at my signatures and study the flow. Finally, they concluded there were enough characteristics that confirmed that they were the same and that I was that person. See, your fingerprint, your handwriting carries your personality. And you can see that they can identify so much from your handwriting. Something powerful when you're trying to take the word and learn it and let it be inscribed in your heart. There's something powerful when you take it and you write it in your own handwriting. As you do, it's like the Spirit of God begins to just write it into your heart. Each letter, each word, fresh revelation poured out, poured in. But I love the thought that these tablets of stone carried the handwriting, carried the name, the personality, because that's in there. Do you understand that my personality helps reveal aspects of my name and my heart written on stone? And everything God does when He begins to write with His hand, with His touch, it will bring conviction or confirmation. And He wants us in the secret place to allow us to come that He may write on your heart. Go forward with me to John chapter 8. Jesus is in the temple. He's in the treasury, it said. The place where people brought their offerings. The place of worship. The place where you laid something on the altar. In this place. Chapter 8, verses 3 through 5. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. And having set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. What do you say? Now I've done a lot of over the last few weeks on the Aramaic. And I pray that you get a hold of that it was the word that they met, Amat Sinai. And it was the word, Jesus the word, that wrote with his fingers that law, that tablets of stones. And here, these scribes and Pharisees, instead of recognizing the word and bowing to his authority, so dishonor him and challenge him by saying, it is written in our law. Talking to the very one who gave it to them. Talking to the one whose heart and character and personality were to be revealed in it, that they would recognize him and know to run to him. They stood boasting in their righteousness, pointing to this woman's unrighteousness and sin. See how good we are, and we want to catch you. It says in verses 5 and 6, And they were saying this, testing him, in order that they may have grounds for accusing him. Oh my goodness. Accusing the word, the one who gave them, that we could disqualify you because we're so righteous, we're so holy, we're so great. Look to us, Jesus. See that sinner? We're trying to make you as guilty as her. And it says, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. Now he's in the treasury. I know in a lot of movies they have it sand. I don't think it was sand. I think it was stone. 
And I think he began to write the law with his finger, the very one who gave them the law, that he began to so write it, and they saw it, and they were convicted, because the, when God's hand, finger, begins to write, his word, his law, it will either convict or confirm. And it brought such holy conviction on them that they recognized that they were not righteous, that they couldn't. They were disqualified by the very fingerprint of God. Many people stand and they want to boast in themselves. And they will say how great and good they are. I want to be one in the secret place of his presence has allowed him to write his law on my heart. In verses 7 and 9, But when they persisted in asking, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone. Let's see who is without sin. The only one there that was qualified was Jesus. And he was the only one righteous and holy and walking, not accusing, but seeking to deliver, seeking to lift up. See, the handwriting of God is not to condemn, not to hold down, but to lift up and bring you into, restore you back into the family of the Lord, to be who you're supposed to be, to walk on this earth blessed of the Lord. And when they'd heard it, can you imagine those words? When the living word spoke, the one who spoke on Mount Sinai, the one who spoke to Abraham, spoke to Moses, begins to speak. There was an authority in his words and they had to listen and they had nothing else to do but drop their stones, starting with the eldest. They had a little more knowledge. Not as stubborn, but they, they may be more stubborn, but they recognized the law. They had to drop their stones. And he was left alone, and the woman, where she was in the midst. And of course, we know the next thing, he said, woman, has no one condemned you? Neither have I. Are you so grateful for the mercy and the heart that even in that law, in his personality, in his heart, fully realized in Jesus that his care for you is not to so condemn you but to bring you into liberty. When everybody else condemns and criticizes, he wants to meet with you and lift you and declare with an eternal purpose, redeemed. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God had such a purpose and plan, and in his character, personality, goodness, which he never changes, he's calling to you today to come into the secret place that you might know him, the depth of him, the depth of his beauty, his glory, of his goodness, of his mercy, that he wants to so set you free. Oh, maybe you're surrounded by those accusing you. The enemy is condemning you. All these things are coming against you. You need to get alone in the secret place of his presence because there's two writings. There's the writing that will convict and there's the writing that will confirm. May you first convict us of sin, that sin may be removed as we repent and get ourselves under the blood. And then may we be confirmed that we are His, found in Him, wholly His, and that now we live no longer for ourselves, but for Him. That comes out of that surrender in the secret place and that allowing Him to touch the heart. That is the greatest intimacy I can think of. In Revelations 3, verse 12, he says, He who comes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. 
and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of my God, or the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven and my new name. Write it on your heart. It's touching, pouring in, filled with his personality and character. Now listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter 3. And it says, You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is your heart. In the secret place, even today, would you so come and allow him to have such access to the secret place of your heart? 1 Corinthians 3.16 We are told that the temple, that we are the temple, and it's a wrong word actually, it's the Holy of Holies. You are the Holy of Holies in which the Spirit of God dwells. He wants to dwell in the secret place of your heart. And it's in the secret place that the tablets are. And that's the place where he writes with his finger. And he imparts himself to you. And it goes on, listen to this. Verse 4, And we have such trust through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Like that woman, God wants to so wreck you. Where the world condemns, disqualifies you, and casts you off, He comes in and says, let me give you revelation of what I did for you on the cross, and this day, right on your heart, my law, that you would live by my Spirit. Stand qualified, brought into the family, not just wearing a ring on your finger, but His name written on your heart, His Word written on your heart, changing you, transforming you, so that you are real and genuine, and that I live now as a life bringing true worship that comes out of the very core of my being, my inner man, my heart, where He has written with His finger His Word. He has made us living epistles. That's what He wants in this hour. Not those that claim not those that manufacture, not those that know the knowledge all about the Word, but those that know, those that in the secret place have so allowed Him to write on their heart in absolute vulnerability, in absolute surrender, in absolute humility, in absolute giving all and saying, I'm on the altar here. God all stand condemning. And the reality is they were right. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory. But God, the riches of your mercy are greater than all that. And he wants to write and inscribe on your heart his love. And that your sufficiency, your qualification, your acceptance comes from him and not yourself. That this day will be such a changing in you that you would no longer walk so defeated with such a poor self-image, but lift it, knowing I am who He says I am because of Him, through Him, and for Him, forever changed, forever transformed by His Spirit. In the secret place, there's a yielding, there's a giving, there's a lingering. Oh, there's so many surgeries, you know, we run from. I don't like pain. But the pain of letting go, of casting off the old, those rags that one time were my identity, that one time were what people saw of me, and they declared over me, I strip off in the secret place and I put on the new robes that come from those whose hearts are His, that He's written 
with his finger. Let me finish with this. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And he qualifies this. Verse 5, for those who are living to the, according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And he begins to explain there's the law of the Spirit and life and the law of sin and death. And many of us have walked under that law of sin and death so inscribed on us. It's on our forehead, everywhere we go. But in the sacred place, there is a breaking through. There's a coming forth of something new where the spirit of life writes the new law on your heart and you change the way you think the way you walk and there's a desire for holiness and purity the world can't understand it because they've not been here but they should see in you a living pistol that they see in you something that's so good so wonderful so great in this world where everybody's condemning Putting down, you walk with a liberty. You walk with a confidence, not a boasting in yourself, but in Him, in an intimate communion and union with Him. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Because if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. This is not my destiny. This is not where I'm at anymore. I'm no longer held captive and in bondage to this. I have been set free. And he has written it in the very core of my being. It's my new identity. It impacts everything about me. How I think, how I walk, how I do. I'm no longer like the world. There's nothing in comparison. I'm like heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. Heaven is my home. I long for that day to be with him because I'm like him. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I don't want, I don't want these old filthy rags, but an ever enforcing and ever receiving, ever allowing him to touch every aspect of this heart and claim it as his home, a giving. And he says this, for as many as led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, because he's written it on my heart. No changing, no going back. This is who I am. I am His, and He is mine. Oh, may this day be a day that you recognize as the day of salvation, where everything must change. If you've walked backslidden, today is the day to get back under the blood. If you've walked so condemned and criticized, maybe that's why you're backslidden, because of all the things, including what the church said over you, did to you, in the secret place, would you allow him to wash you? Would you get alone with him and re-experience him and allow him to touch the heart and make it soft? To make it soft, all that hardening, all that hurt removed, all the pain broken off, a casting off of those rags that you've hated, a life that you don't want to receive something bigger, to live, that you might have life and that abundantly, even here on the earth and a future to look forward that I will be with him for eternity, to live with his personality in me, an overflow of his love, 
because he's touched me. I am never the same. May he touch you today in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. May this be the first day, a new day, a beginning of days for you. Come to the Lord. Come to him in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, even right now. Humble yourself under his mighty hand. Allow his spirit to breathe on you. Repent and plead the blood. Cry out to him. Seek his face. Come alone. Be alone and cry out and say, God, I need to know you. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Jesus, I declare you are Lord. Come and take possession. Be enthroned in my heart. Come and write your law in me. May I never be the same. Come, I want to know you. I want to know you and be known by you. Thank you, Jesus. I am Father in you. I found sufficiency. Not a sufficiency of myself, but I'm in you. This new life is in you. I'm free. Free from all those addictions, all those things that have held me. Free in you. This day, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I pray this message has blessed you. And I encourage you to check out more messages. May they minister to you and encourage you strengthen and edify you that you might live boldly for him in this hour and know him abide in the secret place of his presence this day if you don't have a good local church and you're looking for one consider joining our online services um, you can get more information go to robertpairs.org and go to the about page you'll get an invite because we want to encourage you in this season we want to bless you Consider being a prayer partner with us and receive the reward. For more information, you know, go to the partner page because I believe that when we stand before the Lord, the impact this ministry has, that all the partners share in that reward. And we want to see lives touched. We want something real that ministers to people right where they're at and brings them back to Jesus to truly preach Him to be living epistles, to be something real, to be sacrifices where the fire falls. Amen. I thank you for watching, and I want you to know that we're praying for you, and that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because, through, and for Him, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you.